In the last two videos we discussed that for a one qubit state, we can represent this density matrix as the sum of some coefficients times the poly matrices. So one half of A0 times the identity matrix plus A1 times the poly X matrix plus A2 times the poly Y matrix plus some A3 times the poly Z matrix. And before we had this coefficients here, A0 equal to one, A1 equal to a variable X, A2 equal to a variable Y, and A3 equal to the variable lowercase z. Uh, now I'm using here this coefficients A sub N uh, for reasons that will become obvious in a few minutes. And then we said, well, this, this density matrix then has an associated block vector of the form a1, a2, a3, right? That's our block vector. And we said that we can also express this vector of matrices P as X, Y, and Z. And this is sometimes referred to as the poly vector. Now, um, a lot of times you will see this expressed as the vector sigma because the poly matrices are also referred to as sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z, or sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. Now, expressing things this way allowed us to also represent our density matrix as one half of the identity matrix plus the inner product of this block vector with the poly vector. And then we looked at some examples where we extracted this block vector, but we did it kind of by inspection, right? We, we took, for example, the state right, which has a density matrix equal to one half of one I minus I one, and then comparing that with a general representation for the one qubit uh, density matrix, which is one plus Z X plus I Y x minus i y 1 minus z well it's very easy here to see that uh, in order for these two to match x must be equal to z must be equal to zero and y must be equal to one so our block vector is zero one zero but what if we have a more complicated density matrix and we want to extract this coefficients x y and z is there some sort of recipe to do so and the answer is yes so what we need to realize here is that in the representation of our density matrix as a sum of Pauli matrices with some coefficients, well, this Pauli matrices plus the identity form a basis. So by performing inner products between our density matrix row and each of these Pauli matrices, we can extract each of the coefficients A0 through A3. Now, Let's take a look at how is it exactly that this is done. But first, let's generalize this concept of decomposing density matrices into Pauli matrices. So in the case of a one qubit state, we said that we have a basis of matrices identity and then the Pauli's X, Y, and Z. But now if we have a two qubit system, well, we're going to have a basis composed of Kronecker products of each of these matrices. So, so we will have uh, II, IX, IY, IZ, and then XI, all the way to ZZ. And, you know, by II here, for example, we mean the identity matrix, Kronecker identity matrix. So, you know, that's you know, one zero zero one Kronecker one zero zero one. So that's the identity matrix one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero and zero 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 one, right? And and same for each of the other elements here. So these now four by four matrices will form the basis for a, a two qubit state. So in general, for an n qubit state, we can represent 
its density matrix in the form rho equal to 2 to the n, where n again is the number of qubits, times the sum from i equals 0 to j, and I'll explain what j is in one second, times some coefficients a sub i times p sub i. And here, a sub i are our coefficients, and p sub i are what are known as poly strings. And poly strings are compositions of the three poly matrices X, Y, and Z and the identity. So for the two qubit case, we have this, but uh, for three qubits, we, we would have something like identity, Kronecker, X, Kronecker, Z, and you know all possible combinations. So this J here is precisely the total number of matrices that we would have for an N qubit system, which is four to the N minus one. And you know this minus one is because we're indexing starting from zero. So um, since we have four matrices, when we have N qubits, then we get a total of four to the N combination of matrices. So for one qubit, we have four to the one, which is four matrices. For two qubits, we'll have four to the two matrices, which is 16, and so on and so forth. So now, going back to the question of how do we calculate this coefficients a sub i for some arbitrary uh, density matrix. So in the one qubit case, let's say we have a matrix uh, row 0, 0, row 0, 1, row 1, 0, row 1, 1. So how do we decompose this into the form 1 half of some coefficient a0 times the identity matrix plus a1 times the x matrix plus a2 times the y matrix plus a3 times the z matrix. So we said that what we need to do is then calculate the inner product between rho and each of this basis matrices. But since there are matrices, we need to use a special kind of inner product known as the Frobenius inner product. And if you've taken any courses on machine learning, specifically in uh, neural networks, you're probably familiar with the Frobenius norm. So the Frobenius inner product is what induces the Frobenius norm. And it's given by, uh, so for a coefficient a sub i, we're going to see that we can obtain it by taking the inner product between rho and uh, the corresponding polystring p sub i. And we use this f to denote that is a Frobenius inner product. And this is equal to the trace of rho transpose conjugate times p sub i, where this is just conventional matrix multiplication. So now let's take a look at a few examples to see how we can extract this a sub i for, for some um, density matrices. So to avoid the pain of computing each of these matrix multiplications with each of the Pauli strings or Pauli matrices and then computing the trace all by hand, let's go ahead and use SymPy to look at an example. So first thing we're going to do here is uh, import SymPy, SSP, and then I'm going to define some arbitrary density matrix uh, for a mixed state, and, and I'm going to just do a, a one qubit example, so, so rho is of this form. Now, uh, the first thing we need to do is compute the uh, transpose conjugate of this, so the transpose, uh, if you remember, we're going to uh, swap this off diagonal terms, and the conjugate is applying the um, the complex conjugate to each of these terms. So if we swap this two and then apply complex conjugate, we're going to end up with the same matrix. So we, we can do it anyway. So let's call it a row dagger equal to row uh, transpose and then conjugate. And we can take a look and see that row dagger is the same as row. So we end up with the same matrix. 
And then uh, to in order to compute all the matrix multiplications, well, we need to define uh, all of our um, poly matrices. So let's do that. So here's our identity. Here's our X matrix. Here's Y. And here's Z. And uh, we can we can take a look at them, make sure they're uh, defined correctly. So identity X y and z okay so now that we have all this defined we need to calculate our coefficient so our coefficient a0 will be the trace so sp trace between uh, row dagger right and then matrix multiplication which uh, in sympy and numpy we can use this uh, add character uh, to multiply matrices uh, and then identity matrix and then we can look at a0 and that um, again in sympy I, I explained this in a previous video if we don't simplify it just show us the symbol of trace so we can do sp simplify here and then here we can see that a0 is equal to 1 once we um, do the trace of row dagger with the identity and we can do the same thing for X, Y, and Z. So A1 will be for the X matrix, right? So here we have A1. A2 will be for the Y matrix. So let's do this with Y. And here we get point 0.2. And then A3 will be for the Z matrix. Sorry, A3 for the Z matrix. And here we have it, we have our coefficients. Now, if, if we did this correctly, if we add up all these coefficients multiplied by each of these poly matrices, we should get the same as our original matrix row, right? So let's call that row two. And that should be a zero times identity plus a one times x plus a two times y plus a3 times Z, and let's display that, row 2, and uh, we forgot the one half, right, it's one half of this. And now compare that with our original matrix row, we see that, that they match. So that means that we extracted our, our coefficients um, correctly. Now this is kind of a long and tedious way to do this. Luckily for us, Qiskit allows us to uh, compute this coefficients a lot more uh, efficiently. So, so let's take a look at, at that. Let's let's look at an example. So we're going to do um, our typical, you know, from Qiskit import quantum circuit, and we're going to import from Qiskit quantum info um, state vector density matrix and then we're going to import this sparse poly operator class that is going to allow us to extract this coefficients and poly strings for a particular density matrix so let's look at a typical example of um, a bell state generating circuit so let's apply a Hadamar gate on qubit one uh, cx gate between qubit one and qubit zero and let's draw our circuit to make sure it looks okay and then let's uh, generate a density matrix row for that state um, for that quantum circuit sorry let's take a look at it right and now if we use this uh, sparse poly operator class um, and, and we use this from operator method and pass our density matrix, we can see here that we get our list of poly strings and coefficients corresponding to this density matrix. Um, another Thing that we can do in Qiskit is we can use this poly vector uh, visualization. So if we take our density matrix and we just do draw and then pass this parameter of poly vec, 
it shows us this nice plot with um, the poly strings on the x-axis and then this coefficient amplitudes in the y-axis. So we can look at another example. So let's import from math uh, square root. And uh, let's remember that um, w state that, that we looked in a previous video. Uh, we can look at its density matrix. And see that it's a um, three qubit system, so it's a much bigger density matrix. And we can do the same thing. We can do this uh, draw polyvec method and see that it has uh, many more coefficients and poly strings. And, and here we can see the plot for them. And we can do again the sparse poly operator from operator and pass our density matrix. And here we see that if we were to multiply each of these coefficients, which its corresponding matrix of uh, poly strings, then we should be able to obtain this exact same density matrix once we sum them up and scale them by that one over two to the n in this case, and it will be equal to three. Um, it, it should match this matrix. So. I hope this uh, is a helpful tool if, if you ever need to do this type of decomposition.